so i am here to briefly talk to you about the sociology course that we are going to start from 27th of november this is going to be the last course that we offer for 2024 exam because after that the course that begins in june would be too close to the exam so that will not be very convenient and useful for the students so the november batch that we intend to finish in 4 months time we can finish it in 3 months time also but that we guess would become too fast and may create problem of understanding for the students so we intend to have a 4 month program now firstly i like to familiarize you with sociology as a subject of course what is sociology is what i'll be doing all the 4 months that i would be teaching but very very elementary and brief introduction to sociology would be that sociology is a systematic attempt to study social life we live and when we say systematic it means that sociologists follow certain method when they try to understand social life in fact all of us all the time try to understand social life but we don't use method that is common sense as opposed to that sociologists tend to be methodical now so the syllabus that you have is about one how did sociology emerge in fact why was there a need for sociology so that is what we are going to talk about then what methods do sociologists use as i said that sociologists use a methodical approach so what are the methods that sociologists use that is what we are going to talk about then there are going to be lectures on thinkers there are number of thinkers who have made important contribution in helping us to understand social life so what have been the contribution of these thinkers what have they said and how that makes it easy for us to understand social life how that opens a new insight into social life which common sensically we could not have anticipated then the syllabus was also about parts of society various aspect of society like religion family social inequality the political system etc etc how what is the role they play in society and finally we will also be all along trying to answer the question that how does society continue and how does it change we know that society continues over time societies don't die they change so how do societies continue and how do they change this is all is what sociology syllabus of the first paper talks about and the second paper is about these aspects in the context of indian society we will be looking at different aspects parts of indian society and try to understand them from the view point of sociology sociology does not study something new or different but sociology looks at things from a different point of view all social sciences are concerned about society so sociology is also one of them which looks at society from a different 
पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू जिसको कहते हैं हिंदी में नजरिया उर्दू में कहते हैं नजरिया व्यू पॉइंट सोशोलॉजी लुक्स एट इट फ्रॉम अटन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू सो यूजिंग दैट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू वी विल ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इंडियन सोसाइटी दैट इज वॉट द सिलेबस इज अबाउट सो यू वुड रियलाइज दैट द कंटेंट ऑफ सोशोलॉजी एज एन ऑप्शनल is not very technical sociology is about what you already know you know it common sensically we will look at it from a particular view point a methodical view point so you do not require to have a background in sociology at the college level no academic degree in sociology is essential to understand sociology people with science background in fact perform better in sociology than people with arts background because they are more analytical so sociology is a non technical optional and another advantage that you may have in offering sociology is that guidance and study material is easily available this is i'll repeat that point again also our responsibility to make you understand sociology now then sociology can also be helpful in general studies there is an area in general studies that is called social issues so that area totally overlaps with the second paper and in addition to that even for your essay many a times there are essays on indian society you will be in a better position to handle that essay on indian society once you have gone through sociological uh, exercise or sociology course then even in the interview you will be able to answer your questions better if you have knowledge of sociology if you are better informed about indian society so therefore sociology can be one of the optionals you can think about now once you have thought about sociology as an optional what should be your objective what should be your target see you are not here to become a sociologist you are here to become a good examinee a smart examinee who can score 300 plus in the exam which is not only possible which is practically possible feasible if you fulfill certain conditions one of the most fundamental requirement the basic minimal requirement is that you should be comfortable with writing grammatically correct simple english why do i say english because i teach english medium only those who are in hindi medium they should be comfortable in writing their answers in hindi or any other indian language but i shall talk about english only because that is the medium in which i deliver the lectures so you should be able to write grammatically correct simple english no specialized knowledge of language is required but beyond this you will have to cooperate if you cooperate with the teaching in the institute then 300 is absolutely feasible lot of students have scored in the past why do i say cooperate because another requirement for scoring well in sociology is conceptual clarity that you should be conceptually clear you should understand you should not read too much but whatever you read you should make sure that you understand 
conceptual clarity is very vital and this is where comes the role of the teacher we will make sure that you understand provided whatever you don't understand you are cooperative enough to ask questions queries you should participate you should not simply be a passive listener to the lecture so if you raise questions we will make sure that you understand every concept once you understand the concept it is very easy to handle questions because you know now the questions are not very lengthy questions you don't have to write long essays they themselves say that for 10 questions in the paper you should not write more than 150 words so in 150 words you have to convey the essence if you have understood it and if you can write in simple english you can write your answer easily how to plan and organize your answer that we shall tell you one problem which i have witnessed while looking at the answers written by the students is that instead of understanding the topic they focus on memorizing information all right and reproduce everything in the answer rather than writing relevantly this is what i call lord hanuman approach why do i say that as per the story lord hanuman was to pick up a particular herb but he did not know how to select the relevant from the irrelevant so he carried the whole mountain students also carry the entire package of sociology and dump it in the answer sheet rather than writing only relevantly so you have to constantly think about the questions and you have to constantly identify what is relevant and what is not relevant and only relevant things have to be written that is why they put a word limit on your answer they don't write more than 150 we are not interested in you know simply reproduction of sociological information what the upsc is interested in is your intelligence in understanding the question the meaning of the question clearly identify what is relevant and what is not relevant and writing down relevant things with contemporary example see almost all the thinkers i talked about sociologists that they have made important contribution to sociology the roughly generally they are labeled as thinkers all the thinkers that are there in the syllabus they their ideas are almost 100 years old some are more than 100 years old all right in fact the three founding fathers of sociology karl marx durkheim weber all the three thinkers are there in your syllabus they died 100 years ago more than 100 years ago. so they are writing about a world that existed a century ago and you are writing an answer today examiner would be immensely pleased if he finds you capable of relating those ideas to present day world that shows your creativity that shows your intelligence for which you are going to be rewarded so you will not be rewarded if you simply reproduce sociological information you will be rewarded only if you selectively relevantly write and relate that to contemporary society and when we talk about contemporary society you can divide that into two broad categories because not all societies are alike so one there are developed societies like western europe and america and the other there are developing societies like india cite some examples from india some examples from western europe and america which you will read in the books or you may find in the newspaper 
so if you are able to relate it to those examples then the examiner would be immensely pleased and there are people who have scored up to 70% without having a background in sociology simply by as i use the word being cooperative so what i would expect from the students that every topic that we discuss in the class at least for the thinkers i make a claim that after going through the lecture they should be able to answer every question that has appeared so far in the exam they should be able to answer each and every question so now student should after going home after going through the lecture they should think about the question try to use your sociological information to try to mold that information according to the demand of the question see this is sociological information that you have found in book or lecture and this is what the question demands there is a small gap that has to be filled you have to mold your answer to suit the demand of the question rather than simply reproducing what you have read all right that is what is going to make all the difference if you are able to do that you will easily score well i'll read out a question from this year's say now obviously you are new to sociology you would not know the sociology part of it but what i am trying to highlight is how you have to mold your information to suit the demand of the question suppose the question is is reference group theory universally applicable there is a concept called reference group in sociology and there are theories about reference group now most people would simply write down what is reference group and what are reference group theories and leave it at that they will not get the mark you have to answer the question is it universally applicable to what extent it is and to what extent it is not similarly there is another question what is historical materialism examine its relevance in understanding contemporary societies see the examiner himself is asking you to relate that to contemporary society historical materialism was written by karl marx in 1840s and 50s more than 150 years ago how relevant it is today so the contemporary relevance if you are able to highlight you will be able to score if you simply write down what is historical materialism it will not fetch marks and this is where i am going to help you provided you also cooperate that you try to think take up a question suppose we discuss historical materialism in the class after going home look at this question try to see how it how to relate it and if you cannot relate it next day catch me ask me why how to relate it to contemporary society how to identify its relevance all right so once you do this scoring 60% plus and even up to 70% is not a problem only thing is it will involve a genuine involvement you know participation from your side that generally the approach is to have information to have notes and to mechanically reproduce them in the answer that should not happen and another requirement from the examination point of view is now they ask you to answer 19 questions i'll tell you how apparently they say you to write only five answers 
but every question they have broken into part so there is the first compulsory question and fifth compulsory question in that there is no choice also you have to write answers to five questions each although the answer should be only in 150 words but you have to write answers to five questions so 10 questions and then there are three other questions which you have to answer each one is divided into three parts so that makes it nine so in all you have to write 19 questions for such kind of an answer for such kind of a question paper you cannot afford to leave out much of the syllabus at least 95 percent of the syllabus has to be covered all right so you have to now that is not something you should get scared of because we will complete more than 98 percent in the class if you rely only on class lectures and the readings that we suggest along with it you will be easily able to cover 90 five percent of the syllabus and you will get your five questions easily only thing is sometime one or two ten marker may be bouncers when i say bouncer what i mean is they may be out of syllabus sometimes upsc does that the only mercy small mercy they have is that there are not more than one or two such questions ten marker there you will have to grapple with it, use common sense and somehow work out an answer. But out of 500, you can say up to 480 marks worth of question paper would be what you have prepared. All right. And that you will be able to handle well, provided you have developed this habit of thinking. I call this thought framework making. So that is where I need an active participation from the students. Because we cannot predict the wording of the question. And if you change the wording, the slant of the answer also changes. All right. So you to <laughs> mold the answer as per that change in the wording. Otherwise, we will also have a test program and if you go through the test program we will ensure that every topic in the syllabus you have written a test on so you would know every topic but even then exact wording suppose there is a reference group there could have been a dozen questions on reference group this year the question is is it universal there may be other type of question what are the consequences of reference group behavior there can be another question also. So, there can be different slot, different focus in the question by changing the wording of the question. So, that you will have to adapt there and then in the examination hall. That you can't prepare beforehand. So, what you can do is develop a habit of thinking about the questions beforehand so that in the exam also in two minutes time you are able to organize your ideas and write an answer in the remaining 10 minutes then another important thing that you need to do is that you have to prepare your notes i would strongly recommend that everyone should prepare their notes. All right. My notes are, class notes are available in the market. Now that is taken down by somebody else. You may use them. That's not supplied by me. Some student, enterprising student who attended the class later on sold them in the market. But they are the notes taken by somebody else from their point of view what he has included and what he has not included depends on what he thought was important and what he thought was unimportant so don't go simply by those notes you may consult them but finally combining the your own participation in the lecture 
your basic readings which we are going to suggest and use those notes also combining all of them make your own final notes notes making has two advantages one when you prepare your notes the entire sociology is going to be processed in your mind all right you will think about it you will try to simplify it you will try to make it brief you will try to think of an example so the processing will make sociology endure it will continue it will remain in mind you will be able to remember it better otherwise <clears throat> when you listen to the lecture you may feel you have understood everything after two days later everything has evaporated from the mind because you are not familiar with sociology for a long time so thinking about the ideas and making them brief and thinking about examples that involves you know processing which will make sociology long lasting in your memory one secondly whenever there is a test you can immediately retrieve your ideas otherwise over time you may forget a point or two so you may quickly revise if you have brief notes in fact ideally before the exam there should only be two registers on your table all books should be in the cupboard one for paper 1 and the other for paper 2 in the exam day of exam also after writing your paper 1 the lunch break you have you should be able to quickly revise paper 2 by looking at the register of notes so retrieval would be easy now so this is how we expect you to go about and another thing which is very important is also your mindset your personality that all along you should have a cheerful relaxed person because when people become anxiety ridden they try to the thinking process stops then you cling on to information and it is because of a tensed mind only that you simply reproduce the information thinking that you have done your job you should have a relaxed mind so that you can think that all step that you have to take between what you have read and what is required in the question that calls for bit of a thinking and that thinking is only possible if you are relaxed so the whole preparation should not be like a bit of medicine it should be a cheerful playful learning experience that's the way you should go about it now as far as the readings are concerned i'll give you a very detailed list of readings when we start the course but in case you want to get started early there are some general readings i can suggest for example just to gain familiarity with indian society there is a book called society in india by david mandelbaum society in india by david mandelbaum it's a very simply written book easy to understand only thing is that the author mentions many names of the sociologists ignore the names altogether don't bother the who said it because what he is doing is he is telling you about indian society and also making a reference to the person who has originally said that thing he is being intellectually honest so 
you can ignore the names just try to understand what he says about indian society he will tell you about the caste system in india about village about family about tribes so just form a vivid picture in your mind of the indian society he talks about the traditional indian society so that will serve as a background reading it's only that you are writing the exam in 24 so i am suggesting this reading because this will definitely improve your understanding even in the first paper which is general sociology because you, when there is some idea you would like to relate it to something concrete in the society so your knowledge of indian society will help you think of an example relevant to that theory so that is how it will improve your understanding of the first paper then there is a book called changing india see second paper of sociology is how traditional india is changing this is the essence of that second paper traditional indian society how it is changing mendelbaum will tell you about the traditional indian society then there is a book by robert stern called changing india and there is one more book by amartya sen india development and participation these three books are background reading these readings would also improve your answers in the general studies as well as essay they'll be very helpful for your essay if there is an essay on social indian society then there is a very good book for the first paper themes and perspectives in sociology by herlambos and holborn herlambos and holborn in fact unfortunately we do not have a similar book for paper 2 because this book itself covers almost 70% of the first paper you don't have to read anything else except class lectures in shoot notes and herlambos for the first paper and if you want to get started with the first paper reading you can start with the introduction and then you can go in for chapter 14th and 15th of herlambos now i am not expecting that you will read it and fully understand it your what i am expecting from you is that you should read and identify what you don't understand so that when you listen to it in the class lecture you would meaningfully participate with doubts in mind either those doubts would be automatically cleared with the lecture or you will raise questions to clarify those doubts so your participation in the class would also be meaningful then in addition to this i would expect you to read which of course you are you must be doing already a newspaper where if there is anything on social issues try to read that with interest you will know what are the social issues once you have a look at the syllabus i would like you to acquire this booklet from the market this is syllabus and previous years list of previous years questions so by looking at the syllabus you would know what is it that is of relevance like today's hindu there was an article on in odisha there was a law made regarding 
ट्राइबल लैंड द ट्राइब्स वर अलाउड टू सेल ऑफ देयर लैंड दिस इज अ मेजर प्रॉब्लम वी हैव इन सोशोलॉजी एज अ टॉपिक ऑन ट्राइब्स लैंड एलिनेशन द ट्राइबल्स आर लूजिंग आउट देयर लैंड सो दिस आर्टिकल इज रिलेटेड टू दैट टॉपिक सो बाय रीडिंग दिस सच आर्टिकल्स विद इंटरेस्ट यू विल गेट एग्जाम्पल्स एंड इलेस्ट्रेशन टू साइट इन योर आंसर सो हिंदू इज अ गुड न्यूज पेपर ऑल्सो इंडियन एक्सप्रेस एंड मे बी यू कैन ऑल्सो रीड फ्रंट लाइन I generally discourage people from reading EPW, Economic and Political Weekly, because that tends to be too technical, and only rarely there are relevant articles which can be useful from the examination point of view. So this is how, broadly speaking, you should go about preparing for the exam. and i'll repeat once again that you don't have to read too much you might say i have already suggested three books <laughs> yeah but i don't think that's too much you have a year to go and it will have a spill over effect in helping you for the essay and general studies also there is only one small problem with these books is that the data is dated if we don't have latest data we otherwise also don't have latest data 21 census data has not come out so we are anyway relying on 2011 data so maybe if more recent data comes out before you go for the exam so update the data in which is given in these books otherwise the ideas they will stimulate in your mind that is going to be important. they'll enable you to think they are very well written books so but thinking is more important than reading whatever repeatedly think about previous year's questions try to mold the information to suit that question discuss it with your groups discuss it with the teacher so the more you think about previous year's questions better would be your performance fortunately we have some 30 40 years of question paper available in these booklets that's enough you will have 30 to 40 questions on every topic to think about so with that you will gain lot of confidence if you are able to think and answer about all the questions that have appeared so far you will be able to easily do that for another question which comes in the coming year as long as it is not outside the syllabus so this is all that i wanted to say if you have any questions you can please tell me if you want to read you can read it but actually once you read mendelbaum and the other books i don't think it's required you will have to read ignu material for the second paper and for one topic one small topic in the first paper also for that you will have to read ignu material but otherwise ncert is optional if you want to start from the scratch to be, you know you can read it but it's very elementary hmm see there are no special articles on contemporary issues but i think newspaper and a magazine like frontline very selectively if you want you can read epw also economic and political weekly there are sometimes you know simple and contemporary articles but even carefully following the newspaper and frontline would suffice hmm see for example there are contemporary questions so say on farmers agitation two three years ago there was farmers agitation or a few years ago there was 
a protest movement by women called me too where they came out with the experiences of sexual harassment in the past so there was a question on me too movement now these are all topics on which there is enough information available newspaper and magazine so you don't have to be unduly worried only thing is prepare yourself for the attitude of thinking thinking about the question and organizing information to suit the question that is very very important this can be ensured that all the questions the 19 questions you have to answer are such that you have read and prepared but if you do not have the habit of thinking and you simply write down sociology rather than molding it to the demand of the question then you will not get marks yes what else no you can start now and keep reading it till you can give yourself 20 days or so to go through these books you can start with mandelbaum change no not changing india changing india is robert stern author's name is robert stern s t e r n society in india Hmm. Any other questions? All right. Okay. Thank you. See, my dear, I cannot talk about geography because I don't know enough about geography. i don't know the question pattern and the trend in the exam to give a decisive judgment that either go for geography or go for sociology i can tell you about sociology so it also depends on your aptitude your if you have little interest in social issues when there is a social issue you read it with interest and see sometimes people read newspaper only to look at cartoon strip and sports page they don't read about anything else so now there was this controversy about caste census so you should have had the curiosity what is this caste census why they are doing it why somebody is opposing it why somebody is favoring it that curiosity if you have on social issues and don't have any problem with simple english then you can go ahead with sociology that's all i can tell you but i can't tell you about geography because i have never taught geography hmm yes please any other question All right thank you